welcome to the Endless Honeymoon Secret Dump. Hi, it's Hi. me. This is my voice now. It's cool. Isn't it? Yeah. It's, it's kind of really... husky. It's kind of changing the game a bit. It's still me, but it's a different kind of me. I wish I always wish I was one of those girls who had one of those voices that everyone just like thought was so cute and Oh and really I've always thought that And that I would get meant, all the voice over work. I've always thought that that meant there was childhood trauma. Yeah, probably. Or what about um uh NPR uh radio host voice? They always have a lisp. Hi. Today on This American Life. Is it Roland Packerson? He's here to talk with us. We're so excited. <laughs> well, the, have learn. I ever done my impression of um, the Jobs Hotline at uh, NPR? No. It's like, uh, hello, Jobs Hotline, NPR. Hi, I was wondering if I- you're hired. Okay, Natasha, I've got a question for you. Yeah. What were your top albums of your teenage de- coming of age years? What was the soundtrack to your Ute? The Smiths, anything by the. See, I got if I liked an if I liked a band, I had every single one of the records. So I was the Smiths, yeah. the Pixies, the Beastie Boys, Blondie. Even though she was like from the seventies, I thought she was really cool in the nineties. Um, <laughs> what else did I? What What did I have? Like the whole. You said five? Yeah, I did. And I and now I have a new question for you is, do you know what an album is? Because those are bands. Okay, Moshe, what, what were your top five albums? Since obviously you wanted to say what five albums you loved so much. I'm trying to remember what I really listened to. In my you life. liked gangster rap, right? But I also liked, like classic rock. So I would say, I would say. Oh, The Clash. That was another one I really uh, liked. Great. Uh, you, yours is cooler. Yours is probably cooler. Because, yeah. Uh, my, my musical arc was... Uh, I first got into cool music. I was I listened to uh, classic rock and then heavy metal, or heavy metal and then classic rock, and then I got into into gangster rap and hip hop, and then I got into rave stuff. And that was so, rave. So those are your top five albums. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know what album it is album is either. It's just a, I think it's a genre. <laughs> <laughs> My top five albums: jazz, bar- baroque, Wait. chamber music. So would you say every two years you were like fully changing your musical interests? No, the big switches came. I always liked classic rock, even when I was into gangster rap. So like Led Zeppelin, House of the Holy would probably be up there. I the, liked that. that the, the White that Album good. probably would be up there. That was good. Cream Disraeli Gears. Loved that one. I listened to that all the time. Probably would be up there. But then... Isn't the, that weird? In the 90s, we liked 70s music. Well, it was the best. It's still the best music. Yeah. And then when I got in a really into gangster rap, my, my coming of age music, well, I had two chunks of coming of age, my gangster rap phase and my rave phase. I couldn't tell you who my favorite albums were because it, it didn't work like that. I could tell you who my favorite DJs were and who my, what my favorite like house and techno tracks were. But my the albums of my gangster rap youth, probably I would say Snoop Doggy Dogg's Doggy Style. <laughs> I would say, um, I would say. Uh, Nas. Well, Nas is Illmatic, definitely, for sure. My little brother liked all of this, so I kind of know. Na- Nas, was, Nas was for sure up there. I listened to a lot of very obscure gangster rap as well. Like, There's a compilation called the Herm Lewis compilation that I listened to a whole lot. Spice One, I listened to a fellow named Spice One. Um, I think it was called... Uh, I think it was called 187 She Wrote. Uh, that album, I don't, I don't know for sure. And... Um, but then I, I liked hip hop that wasn't gangster rap too. Um, uh, Balloon Mind State by De La Soul was one that I liked to take LSD and eat mushrooms and listen to. And Tribe Called Quest Low End Theory. Those were all seminal albums for me. Uh, too Short. Life is Too Short. E 40s Federal. These were all big, big, big tracks uh, albums for me. i have to say going from were there a lot of people who went like gangster rap rave that seems like yeah. quite a hop i don't think it no it's not no it's not a hop do you know that your accent has changed since you started talking about your favorite music no <laughs> tripping straight tripping over here talking about my accent change man fucking white girls um also i would say appetite for destruction would maybe be in there that was like just before the the rap started. He was hard to not like, but I found him a little like boring mainstream. You mean Axl Rose? Yeah. Oh. I mean Guns N' Roses. No, they're good. They were the best. They were great. A lot of good album. I agree. Anyway. Well, there we go. Well, uh, any we anything else you wanted to uh any other conversation starters, Mosh? 
I don't have any more conversation starters, but I have a desire, which is to listen to some secrets. I would love to listen to some secrets. Honestly, that's why I'm here. I'm also here for that very reason. I host a podcast where we play secrets. That's so fun. I hate when people describe things as fun that aren't that isn't like a fun thing. Like oh, you know what I hate? Like they'll see your something like a like a TV show and say it was fun. Oh, okay, that's annoying. I like I like that. You know what I hate? What? I hate when people laugh at the thing they just said. <laughs> I'm like, there's no way that's funny to you. Like once isn't in that a, a nervous tick? Once in yeah, once in a while you can say something that shocks even you and makes you laugh. Yeah, but if it's part of your thing where you laugh at a thing. I definitely it, start funny. laughing sometimes when no, I'm saying something. I, you will laugh at a thing. Okay, I'm, uh, let me suss it out what I'm saying. If you say, sometimes I'll say I'll say something so rude to someone that I'll laugh at the fact that I said it. I think that's funny. Like, I th- that's good. I'm, that's a good one. What I'm talking about is somebody going like, oh my God, I'm so random. I went into, I went into Barney's the other day and I'm like, I bought Vans. <laughs> no, there's no way that made you surprised enough to laugh you know what i'm talking about not really you don't know what i'm talking about they said i they did they think that was funny or it's just like a nervous tick it's like a nervous tick but i hate it i hate that tick (laughs) you're entitled to hate that tick thank you you're gonna hate it even more when you have to like re-enter society nah i'll even like that all right well let's hear some secrets what's going on with people i have some secrets what do you got i'm not gonna tell you Call the line. 213-222-8608. Talk. I should. Yeah. Use your weird NPR voice so I don't know it's you. All right. I think that I'm <laughs> sick of my husband. And I think he needs... I'm going to take his cell phone and shove it up his fucking ass. I'll be like, okay, Tasha. I know it's you. <laughs> All right. Let's hear a secret. Hey, Moshe and Natasha, uh, my wife and I here, we're calling you from Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. Uh, we're teachers and we have an 11 year old daughter. We've been distance learning for some time now. She's pretty independent and can do pretty much everything on her own. So we've given her some free reign. Um, so we come to find out that she's been spending her time not doing most of her schoolwork, but spending it on the app Roblox, which is like an online cash to win game where you buy a bunch of random animals and I don't know, really just spend money uselessly. So we found out that she kind of hacked into our Apple ID and she charged what added up to over a thousand us dollars in the last two weeks. And so we confronted her about it. We had a great talk. Uh, she, I, she confessed, and said she wanted help getting out of the hole. It was a lot. There were a lot of tears. Um, oh my god! Yeah, we felt really good about the conversation. Uh, okay, so we set up a plan for her to pay it back, doing odd jobs for people, uh, which she's done diligently. And truth be told, we're really loving the change that we've seen in her. Within two days of finding this out, she actually we actually got money back from Apple, the entire refund, and. <laughs> We're feeling a little bit guilty because we've seen such a positive change in her that we're not really willing to tell her yet that she that we got the full money back. Um, we're really just loving the new, you know, very responsible daughter that we have, and we kind of want to keep it going. So I don't know. That's our secret. We feel really bad about it, but we also feel like she's learning a great lesson. Um, yeah, please advise. It's not her business that you got paid back for it. I mean, it she is. She hacked into the Apple ID. She's paying them back for money that they have. But I have an idea. What? What do you think? I mean, I, no, I don't want to. I just think that she's 11 and they don't owe her that information. And I also think, yes, I'm right. The phone will ruin everybody. So I knew you were going to have that angle. First of all, I want to say I'm very thrilled that we have uh, listeners in Saudi Arabia. That's pretty cool. Um, and I... I, this is this one seems simple to me. What? You make the daughter pay the full thousand dollars back, and then say you got it. You match it with the money you got back, two thousand dollars. You put it into. You say this is yours now. 
the in, in that That's way, a she, great lesson. She gets the lesson and the gift. You maybe know? the parents don't want to give her all that money. <laughs> that could be true. But I just no, I don't mean give it to her like here's two thousand dollars. Although in Saudi Arabia, I mean that's nothing. You know, that's just a that's just one one big gulp full of oil. But you, I think you put it into like an account or something. Like you now have two thousand dollars in the very special, you know, daughter that's account. That's a great idea. And I think it would be really bad parenting if she's showing all this improvement to be like, oh, uh, never mind. You don't have to go to like uh, there weren't any the consequences. Lawn. Yeah, because even if they don't say that. Now that they have their money, she's going to be like, Dad, come on. I don't want to go do that. And but the, instead, she's... So it's like actually good parenting. I don't think you should feel guilty. Yeah. Double that money. Give it to her. And if you really want to make a profit, take all $2,000 and uh, gamble it on roadblocks or whatever that app was. And you could maybe double your money. kind of worried about her, though. No. Crying why? Crying at 10 to get out of the hole. Well, I mean, I think he was joking, but I did like oh. the idea that he was. She was there, like, I can't. I don't know what to do, Dad. I'm a gambling addict. <laughs> it's just like it's emojis. My friend's five year old said that they stole their phone and got their Apple ID and broke in and just started playing video games. I called two thousand dollars worth of phone sex when I was in puberty. It's like it's a it's a thing people do. Five, ten, puberty. That's a little different. Let me tell you something. If our kid gets fucks off my money. It ain't going to be a fun conversation. She's out on the street that afternoon. And I I'm think, talking any amount. $5, $10. She's out. What do you think? Nothing. What? I just think phone culture around kids is really important. Okay, let's hear another <laughs> secret. I really do. Do you though? Hi. I am a huge fan of the podcast. And this is not my darkest. This isn't a dark secret at all, and <laughs> it's, kind of, it's kind of funny, but I grew up extremely poor, really sad life, home life situation, um, like, didn't have food in the house, I had an alcoholic father, he went to prison, like, terrible, you know, upbringing, but my secret is that I got out of it, and my credit score is 825. <laughs> And I can't really brag to anybody. So I'm calling to brag because it's really cool. <laughs> uh, I know it's just a credit score, but whatever. It makes me happy and I can't really tell anybody. So that's it. Okay, bye. Wait, why can't... Is 800 good, right? Yeah, but I guess she just feels like it's gauche or maybe with her family being poor. Maybe still she can't be like, hey, I'm fucking balling over here or whatever. That's so cool. I love that. It's Yeah, I love that. I think getting out of debt was like something I never thought I would be able to do in a way when, you, when you're in it, when you have like, you know, I remember I would just get a credit card for anything. They would always be like, do you want a credit card? And I'd be like, yeah, I'll take a Victoria's Secret credit card. And then I would spend like <laughs> seven years paying like $55 a month for like a $150 item I bought like four years ago for some, Ugh. you know what I mean? And I just had so many things like that. And then they all start like the smallest amounts of money too can like ding away. And then you owe $20,000 for school. And anyway, paying it off and getting... It didn't even feel real that I had a good credit score. So I think that's that is something to be proud of. Yeah, and I also just love I mean, I know it's not a uniform experience, so sometimes people's really traumatic childhoods really do fuck them up and make their lives permanently damaged and beyond repair, but I love it when that's not true. Like, you know, like yeah, the, she, even the tone of her voice was just like this person healed from their trauma. I like that. that. Everything you were saying is so much. Yeah. Like to have no food and an alcoholic parent and not have a home. I mean, that's like, that is uh, inspiring. Yeah. So thank you. Good for you. And we would like to borrow $2,200 <laughs> and you can afford it. We now know. Please call us back. Let's hear another secret. Well, my secret is that in college, I kind of stumbled into working at a happy ending massage parlor um and i did that for a little bit and then that kind of led to other sex work and eventually i ended up working as a prostitute so i can't say i'm proud of it um it was only high clientele i wasn't like working on the street or anything but I catered to, like, businessmen and made decent money, I guess. 
Uh, but now I make six figures working a corporate job and no one has any idea. So thank you. Love you. You know, that too was an inspiring story. Well, I think women can put our, we can definitely put ourselves in demeaning. This seems like it was demeaning for her. And I've definitely been there. I think that different people have, how, have limits as to how far they'll go. And I think some people maybe could handle hand jobs. Hand job, hey, it's, hey, it's like whatever. Uh, or and then sex though, you know, like that's full sex work. Yeah, but so, you know, some people love sex work. They they find it empowering. No, but this I understand, but didn't. she didn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I agree. And I, she uh, seemed slightly humiliated by it. She kind of fell into it. Cause she's like, okay, I can handle this. Well, I thought what was funny in her message was that saying that you didn't work on the street. It was high end clientele. Is kind of like uh, it reminded me of the way people talk about um, hanging out now they'll be like oh yeah i was hanging out with some friends it was socially distant and uh <laughs> covid safe all masked that's how it sounded to me uh well that's good though i kind of there's something kind of hot about that walking around a corporate environment yeah. with like a with like a dirty secret i think that's good kind of fuck all those squares you think these squares you work with don't have fucking skeletons in their closet too at least you just gave hand jobs they probably killed people it is hard though with that kind of secret because i do think a lot of men would judge that so you, or i don't know if she dates men or women but i know a lot of men would so then it's like do you tell a partner that I don't think I would. I, it's really what would de- you think if I told you I used to be a prostitute? I guess I would. At this point, I wouldn't care. No, I wouldn't care. Okay. Well, I mean, maybe, I don't know. Maybe I have some... You'd, you'd think it was hot. I would, in a way. Maybe I'd have some... You'd be like, do you have any recommendations for a threesome? Do I have a different <laughs> accent for that as well? When I get <laughs> when I talk about gangster rap, I have one accent. When I get horny, I have another. <laughs> do you have any recommendations for a threesome? Okay, so you, I'm just saying it's an interesting idea because you also, no, there's a you don't want to have, it's one thing to walk around the office, but then you also don't want to like not tell but someone who I you're guess, intimate I with, guess but I it's feel, not really any of their business. That's true too. And I also feel like there's nothing that shameful about it. It's like, I mean, it's significant that she felt ashamed by it, but it's like, what does it matter? Do I, I don't know if I'd be, if I could date a, a person that was doing sex work while we were dating. I think I and I don't. Th- I think that's an issue I would have. I think I would have a hard time with that. Of course you would. Yeah. If your wife was a prostitute, you maybe have a hard time with that. Well, some people wouldn't have a hard time with it. Some people. Do I, they have I mean, an open relationship. No, nope, no. They the pr- prostitutes get married. I guess so. They do, and they have like rules around their sex work and whatever. And that sounds very complicated. It does, but you, know, you find the right guy. You'd have to be married to someone really cool and open. But that's it, hopefully you'd be married to someone really cool and open. I mean, listen, not what everybody. If you were married to like a jealous guy, <laughs> that would suck <laughs> for you as a sex worker. I would guess. Well, anyway, speaking of sex workers, I have an appointment with the internet in about. 30 minutes. Wait, can we hear one more? Yeah, let's do it. Hey, Moshe. Hey, Natasha. I have a secret for you. Um, I have realized today while quitting another job that I love quitting jobs. I get high off of quitting jobs. It feels so freeing, especially when that job is worth not worth the time that you spend at it. Uh, my absolute favorite thing to do is to put in my two weeks and then within that two weeks come up with a reason why I can't finish the two weeks. Oh my God, it's so <laughs> exhilarating. So this time around, I think I might go with COVID. <laughs> ah, someone in my family got COVID. I can't finish my two weeks. Thanks, COVID. Um, yeah. You know, I'm trying not to wish any harm on people by using them as lies to get out of <laughs> this two weeks but you know what fuck it thanks guys bye i wish i could have quit that secret a little earlier she seems like she doesn't need money also i like that she turned into a bit of a monster at the end i was like this is cute this is harmless she's like oh and i also said my dad died of a double pneumonia covid coma um i I was thinking about it while she was talking. I don't think I've ever quit a job. Have you ever quit a job? I got fired from many waitressing jobs. That I got, sucked. I got fired from, I wasn't even really a firing, but I got like demoted and then kind of, oh, I did quit. Yeah, that's right. My first job was I dressed in a bear costume and passed out flyers for this place 
at UC Berkeley campus. Mm. And I really liked that work because it was showbiz. But um, I, I, but I also uh, worked downstairs doing stock, a vintage, it was a vintage clothes, play, clothes place. And they downgraded my hours. They didn't want me to do the vintage stuff anymore. They just wanted me to do the bear costume and I couldn't afford it. So I said, I can't do it and I quit. It's the only time I've ever quit a job. I don't know if I have. Oh, actually, yeah. I remember I worked at some bar called the Continental in, in New York, like in the East Village. And it was like cramped and I was cocktailing and like had my hands up and like a whole tray of beers just like fell everywhere. And it was just like dark and loud and everyone used to smoke in bars. It was just awful. Mm. Mm. I, think, I think I only worked one night. Well, oh, did I quit another job? Is this interesting? Probably not. <laughs> okay, I mean, Why don't we wrap up the episode? No, let's hear one more because that one left us like kind of wanting. Know. Hey, Moshe and Natasha. I have a secret. So my ex-boyfriend was a total asshole and I thought it would be really funny to get back at him one time by like putting some laxative in his food or drink, uh, much like Dumb and Dumber when he puts the, the laxative in his drink. Hey, Shout out Jim Carrey. Anyway, <laughs> uh, where Jim Carrey went right and I went wrong was I didn't think to buy like flavored or flavorless stuff. What I did was like bust open a capsule and dump the dust into like a burger patty and smash it in from like a fast food burger. And so I took his burger home and gave it to him and he took a bite and was like, oh my God, what is wrong with this? This burger is rotten. Like this is not okay. He made me drive him to the fast food place where he like berated the employees <laughs> an and um, well, probably deservedly so if you think that's what they gave you but anyways they like totally refunded our money i didn't say a word and he never found out that it was me trying to sabotage him anyway that's my secret i've never told anyone before thanks for listening love the podcast guys Bye. That's a great secret. Imagine being in a relationship where you like took your lover's hamburger and like tried to like make them have diarrhea from like a <laughs> pill that you. S- that is think, so crazy. To do you me. think she realized? Why is she with him? Do you think she realized standing in the parking lot of the like what a burger that she with the laxative burger as he screamed at the at the cashier and she tried to stay in character of a confused <laughs> girlfriend that she was like, this relationship is over. Do you think she had the realization there? I mean, maybe when you're young, you just kind of like, don't think you can break up with people or something. Right. Or you're just kind of like, I guess I'm with them, <laughs> but I want to secretly poison them. You don't feel any of that energy I mean, towards me. Do the you? Quarantine is not helping. Okay. Why don't we wrap it up? I got video games to play. Okay, honey. Well, no matter what, even if you can't stand being around me, even when I'm scrolling on my phone playing Robo Blocks or whatever, it's with my friend in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. I wish I knew how to quit you, but I don't. Because, Natasha, I love you. I love you too. Now I'm going to go masturbate to some gangster rap. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>